And I wanted to uh, go a very different route from our previous collaboration on the um, Dime Tap story. I wanted this one to be much more self-reflective, like almost meditative. But um, as with most things in life, I wanted it to capture the transitions that we go through emotionally and mentally and through our various experiences. Um, we might start something in life feeling hopeful, optimistic, and then realize that something doesn't go as planned and vice versa. And that's why the piece is called Closer to Revelation. Musically, I wanted to achieve this with automating um, reverb on the ukulele so that, for example, it starts off with a pure innocent sound and then with the reverb uh, towards the end of the piece when the story changes it feels darker it feels more haunting and i also um, start off with lighter sounding instruments and then as it progresses it add more bass tones and darker thicker sound as you'll hear from janet the piece came to life through her story and through Alexandra's uh, narrating. So, so Olga shared the musical track with me and I listened to it a few times and then she shared the title of her piece, which is Revelation. So based on that and kind of responding to the memories that pop up for me when I listen to that kind of music, it's a very haunting piece, it seems to be asking a question. And what um, came up for me was a very emotional revelation in my life is when I found out that I was pregnant for the first time. So I wrote about that and then several events um, that followed in short order that made me feel um, uncertain and confused, uh, which is kind of what I thought went pretty well with the tone of Olga's piece. It started to seem like my life might be stuck. After 11 months of trying, I had not yet gotten pregnant. Doctors had shot blue radioactive materials into my reproductive system to ensure nothing was blocking ovulation or implantation. They found nothing, so I would have to keep trying. I resolved to document new sensations in my body that might indicate early pregnancy. I did so with an assiduous zeal reserved for nerds and tryhards, both of which I am. A month later, my husband and I traveled to Florida to be with his family for Thanksgiving. I was starting to feel a mild but unmistakable weirdness, unlike any other feeling I had jotted down in weeks before. Bubble guts, inability to tolerate the smell of incense at my friend's wedding. So I peed on a test strip, set a timer, and waited with my husband in the bedroom furthest from where my in-laws were sitting. A faint, nearly imperceptible line had appeared on the strip. I was pregnant. My husband sat dazed on the bed and I fell face down on the coverlet with disbelief and joy. Finally, life would begin to take on the contours we had envisioned for ourselves. I'm still reeling from the events that followed. In short order, my father-in-law was diagnosed with shingles, a disease that can be dangerous to fetuses, so I packed my things and fled their home. Then, my husband's colleague, with whom he worked closely, was one of the first people in New York City to contract COVID, so once again, I hustled away to quarantine with my parents. We reunited after 10 days, only to be given shelter-in-place orders. As New York City locked down, and as my body changed, so did the rhythms and sound of daily life. I started buying groceries with a scarf over my mouth and with gloves on. Then the nightly pop banging for nurses started. Then the disembodied voices of Black Lives Matter protesters reached our windows. And then my best friend died of cancer. And uh, we were left to grieve the unfathomable loss in online spaces. When my daughter arrived two months later, I was no longer stuck in that old place. 
everything I had ever known had been wiped away and I would have to begin again, as wobbly as a baby, stepping into my new reality.